Stockton residents, it's uh, Mayor Sullivan. I am just so honored to be back before you. Believe it or not, this is my 42nd episode of Our Brockton. The title speaks for itself. It's Our Brockton, it's our community, it's our home. And as you know, in previous shows, I always like to have uh, guests that come on, that educate and inform, uh, people that are making a difference here in the city of Brockton. Today, we have a wonderful, wonderful guest, uh, Carol Maloney. Uh, she is a registered nurse here in the Commonwealth. She is actually leading as the manager of the uh, Mayor's Wellness Trust Team. Just to tell you a big, big background about this, of course, at the onset of COVID, we created the Health Equity Task Force out of the Mayor's office, led by John Messia, who is my Director of Constituent Services and Community Outreach. And then John and I, every single day, would meet, and we said, listen, we have to continue the efforts on the Health Equity Task Force, but we need to actually pivot a little bit slightly, a branch off of that with the Wellness Trust Team. And, and Carol, and her wonderful team of nurses and associates have been awesome, awesome. So Carol, welcome. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Really appreciate you being here today. And um, we're going to talk today about the wellness team and the wonderful, really exceptional uh, um, results that have been driven as a result of your leadership and your team's leadership, getting vaccines in the arms of folks, helping our seniors, helping people living in the high rises, making sure that all segments of the population have been um, informed about COVID and uh, giving out um, uh, the, the wellness bags that you've been doing. But before we get into all these wonderful uh, details, why don't you tell uh, the audience a little bit about yourself and your background and how you came to work for the City of Champions? Sure. So I'm a registered nurse and I was trained in critical care. Uh, so anyway, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, my colleagues and myself realized that the public health infrastructure was not set up to handle a pandemic like That's the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. So we came together as a group and we talked about it and we thought, what can we do? How do we help? And we decided that we would approach uh, cities and towns yep. and tell them that, that we were a group of nurses willing to come in and help them during the pandemic. So we didn't know what that was going to look like. And I don't think anybody knew what, no. what it was going to look like no. in the beginning. So we started out in Randolph. That was the first town that we actually worked with. And we developed a program to go in and visit families who had active COVID houses mm -hmm. within the household. Mm -hmm. And at that point, there were not many people willing to go into houses. Right. Um, because we didn't know. Right. People didn't know and they were afraid. So our team, because we were all critical care nurses working in hospitals with COVID patients, we thought, well, we, we could do it. Yes. Yep. We'll try. And we did. And, and, and you what, did it exceptionally, too. I mean, you know, you were the leader of the team. It was just other really dedicated clinicians, you know, registered nurses that um, just really kind of took the bull by the horns, you know, and ran point working with John Messier in my office again, mm -hmm. um, working with Dr. Montessier at the Board of Health, working with Dr. Rick Herman, our medical consultant, and really with the same shared vision, right? We need to make sure we save lives in Brockton, yep. and we also provide the services that people need. A lot of people are homebound. A lot of people, as you know, in Brockton live in confined settings, generational settings, where you might be the parents, the grandparents, and the kids living in a triple-decker. And can you just share um, some of the strategies because Randolph's very similar to Brockton, mm -hmm. right? It's not as large, but it's mm -hmm. the same type of a breakdown. I have a lot of good friends over in Randolph. But how did you how did you plan and proceed here in Brockton? Well, what we were able to identify early on that the there was a, I, we felt that the biggest threat with spread was actually within the home. Mm -hmm. So if someone in the home had COVID, many times it went right through the home. Mm -hmm. So we, what we did was we went and met with families and taught them strategies to prevent COVID from running through the home. So that's, there's simple things that families could do that they weren't aware of. Um, for just ventilation, right. opening windows, yeah. getting fresh air in the house every day, wiping down uh, the kitchen or the bathroom after cooking or eating, keeping the sick person isolated and wearing the proper protective equipment. Yeah, that's the key. That's the key. And I know mm -hmm. when you went mm -hmm. to these home visits, I mean, the educational component was, was key. It was critical, but also uh, giving out those bags as well. So disinfectant wipes and, you know, PPE and just a plethora of, of information that was shared, but also they, they, they were able to actually get something. You know what I mean? They got the shot, which was life-saving, and but they also were able to make sure that they are saving um, the environment, their home environment for other ones that li li live there as well. Right, right. So we did, we, um, we addressed that right up front because I think 
what we found were people just didn't have the equipment they needed yeah. to put these strategies into practice. And so what we, what we were able to do was say, what do these people need? What do they need to keep themselves safe within mm -hmm. the home? Mm -hmm. And again, PPE, yep. number one. We don't think, we, you know, we just assume everybody has masks. That's not the case. Mm -mm. They weren't easily available, you know, readily available to people. They weren't, they didn't have the proper cleaning supplies. They didn't, they, they just weren't equipped um, in ways that they needed to be to, to maintain a safe environment. So we worked with, with the city yep. and we put together what we called a recovery bag. And in that bag, the bag has evolved as yeah, everything yep, has evolved. Absolutely. Um, we've had to pivot many times along the way and with the, under the guidance of John Messia mm -hmm. and yourself and mm -hmm. our, uh, the wellness, the health equity task force and the wellness trust team, we were able to sort of look at these bags and the things we were doing and, and make a plan. And um, again, the, the bags, what we, what we were able to do with bags is we, we supplied masks, gloves, paper towel, mm. um, alcohol wipes, mm -hmm. cleaning supplies. It really well, ran the gamut. It went, it, yeah. And it changed, yeah. and it, it sort yep. of changed you know, along the way. We, hand sanitizer. Mm. Not everybody had hand sanitizer. So we were putting together these bags, and again, they evolved. We found that people that were alone had nothing, some of them had nothing to do. So we put books. Yeah. We bought, we bought little books and yep. put books in the bag. Crossword we put puzzles, crossword, I remember that. Yep. Crossword yep. puzzles and word searches. Yeah. And, you know, so we tried to put things in the bag, and most importantly, we, we put a list of resources mm. available to families. City, you know, city resources, whether it was help with food insecurity, whether it was help with um, heating, electricity, yep. you know, things that people were struggling with, we were able to sort of guide them and, and uh, you know, let them know where these resources were and how to get to them. And how to get to them. And I think, I think again, none of us expected, you know, to have a, a worldwide pandemic again, right? It comes every hundred years, right? right? We didn't expect it to come. but. I will say that you, as the leader of the wellness trust team, were phenomenal. I will also say that um, to get into metrics and data, like over thousands of houses were visited, and then between the actual physical visiting the houses and calling people on the phone, I mean, what do you, what do you think? What, what's a close guesstimate? What do you think that total will be? Over five thousand combined? I think we're we're, I mean, we're probably over five thousand at this point. That's amazing. And then mm -hmm. the vaccine clinics that you you manned. Um, you know, we're, we're one of the best gateway communities in Massachusetts in terms of the total numbers, right, based upon over 85,000 or 100,000 population. Yes. So, you know, that's kudos to you, first of all. I mean, it was a team effort, but, you know, the goal and the whole shared vision was we want to have a healthy, safe Brockton. We want to save as many lives as we can. Of course, we couldn't save everybody. But again, what was done um, was life-saving. And it was also the personal touch, right? So it's the, you know, the 85-year-old man or the 85-year-old woman that has lost their spouse that are living at home, and you pick up the phone and you call them. And, right. you know, that's, that's, a personal, that's a personal touch. I mean, you have to have a... My mom's a retired registered nurse, right? So I say thank you for what you do. It's a special calling to be a healthcare provider. Um, but then you throw in the fact that we're in a pandemic and, and all the bets are off, right? So right. what were some of the takeaways? Like, what were some of the experiences that you had that you'll always remember about? And again, COVID's not gone. Let me make that clear. COVID is not gone. Mm -hmm. The census numbers are decreased, meaning the people in the hospitals are decreased. But we have lost two more people to COVID in the last week. So COVID's not gone, ladies and gentlemen. Be safe. Mm -hmm. If you're not feeling well, stay home. Call your primary care physician. At home test if you need them. We'll deliver them to your house as well. But what were some of the takeaways like that you'll always remember? And when COVID, we can finally say we're not there yet. That it's over. Right. When it does, what are some of the thoughts about Brockton and, and the wellness team in Brockton? Oh, well, that's easy. Yeah, that's an easy one. The connections we made with people. Mm. I'm mean, as you know, um, at the beginning of COVID, people were terrified. Yes, people were terrified. Yeah. They were alone. They were terrified. They were isolated. And we were able to go in and sit at people's kitchen tables mm. with them, at people who hadn't seen someone for months, yep. who had been you know, completely alone. We were able to connect with them and let them know that we were there, the yeah. city was there. We provided every single person that we saw with our a phone number, our phone numbers. Oh yeah, personal. Our oh, personal yeah. phone oh, yeah. numbers that yep. they could reach out to us. We didn't dispense medical advice, but what we did 
was we provided support and education. Mm. And that was what the people needed. That's, that's what, what that's needed. what people were looking for. Just the companionship, the support, and, and the education to understand what was happening and how to help themselves. I think we really empowered people who felt yeah, so helpless. Yeah, they felt helpless that, and alone. Right. And, so know, we were able scared, to, very scared. People, were, people yeah. were terrified. Yeah. And I will say I've done a lot as a nurse. I've been in a nurse for a long time. Thank you. And I've done a lot as a nurse, a lot of different things. This hands down was the most rewarding work I've oh, ever done. That's fantastic. And it's not over. No, it's mean, not I know over. We're we still had, out there. Our yeah, teams you're still out there today, today right? And, there. you know, yeah. we, we do the weekly health equity task force call. You're mm -hmm. always on it. Your team's always mm -hmm. on it. Um, I think really just to, um, to kind of, you know, broad spectrum, if people are looking to reach out or they think they need an at-home visit, what's the best way to tell them to reach out to the wellness trust team? I think it's through the mayor's office. Yeah, through John Messia? Through John Messia in the mayor's office. Okay. I think if they would like one of us to come, you know, see them, visit yep. them, they can call in to John and John will get the information to us. So if you, if you are um, in need of any at-home services and assistance, right, relative to COVID, um, you can always call the mayor's office, right? It's 508-580-7123. John Messia, M-E-S-S-I-A. Again, he is my director of constituent services, community outreach. He's also charged with leading the charge on the wellness team and the health equity task team. And I just want to publicly thank him because his efforts have saved lives. We're working with Carol and her team as well, and with all the other clinicians as well. Um, so, what's next? Like, like again, we're continuing this efforts. Um, you go door to door. You're providing information. I know there were some segments of the population that, you know, I know some people came, got the first shot, and never came back for the second, right? right? And that's a no-no. We need to get the shots. We need to get the boosters. You know, we're still doing on the city side. Every Tuesday at the Shaw Center, still our vaccine clinic up there. Uh, on Saturdays, it's still the regional DPH sponsored with Brewster Ambulance. But if if what do you think is next? Like continuing to educate and inform and continuing to also tell them the flu is here as well. I mean, it's lower this year, but it's still here. There's a, right. a, a lot of sickness right. right right now. Right, right. Well, we have um, we have supported over a hundred um, vaccination wow. and home vaccination days, vaccination clinics. Yeah. Excuse me, vaccination clinics and home vaccination days in the city That's since great. since Thank we started. So there, um, we've tried to hit every neighborhood. Um, we have worked with all the nonprofits yep. and tried to connect and, you know, let them guide us yes. as to how we can, you know, best help their communities. But essentially what we did was if someone tested positive for COVID, we would reach out to them with a phone call, offer a visit. Mm -hmm. If they would like a visit from one of our staff members to come in and talk to them about, again, strategies and resources. Once we, once we did that, we would provide them with a our phone number yep. to reach out and yep. we would provide support whatever they needed going forward we would try to help them um, awesome. we had people reached out but most people didn't yeah but we've been told over and over how comforting it was to know that they could reach out that they had a phone number because sometimes you call your doctor's office and you can't get yeah. through and, and, I'll, and I'll attest to that because I can tell you Carol where I've been out in the city people are very thankful um, that the team exists, number one, and that if there was home visits, like people acknowledge that. They say, hey, thank you, Mayor, for doing it. And I'm like, I didn't go to the door. It was the clinicians. It was the, the really dedicated team. Mm -hmm. But it was a collaborative effort. You know, we, we, we are going to continue to work together on this, making sure the goal is to have a healthy, safe city of Brockton. And then the other thing that people should know, when you do a home visits, if you went to a home that had some food insecurity, you would report back to John. We would call the Laura Streets over at the Charity yeah. Guild. We'd actually deliver food as well. So it was really all-encompassing. We had people yeah. every, every single day who needed food. Yeah. Every single day. And we were able to run that through your office, through John Messia, and people got food that afternoon many yeah, times. they did. And they, they always did. had it by the next day. They did. And they were beautiful food boxes that we were really proud to see, you know, with fresh fresh fruit and vegetables and fresh healthy, meats. Yeah, healthy food. Healthy foods yeah. that people need when they're sick. Yep. Um, it also helped keep people in the house. Right. Because, at, you know, at one point we were really stressing this quarantine at one point. It was two weeks long. Right. Right. So people couldn't get out to the no. supermarket. No. So the city provided food to many, many, many households during that time that we were able to identify. Right. So what we've done, what we're doing now, what we're doing since then is we have actually uh, put an emphasis on home vaccination. Good. 
because there are a lot of people out there that still can't get to vaccine clinics and may have been vaccinated with the first series, yep. the primary series, and never got the boosters. So we are calling, um, hopefully, everyone over 65 years of age in the city of Brockton and letting them know that we are out there, we can come and help them, we can vaccinate them in their home. If they don't want that, we direct them to somewhere in the city yeah, yeah. where they can be vaccinated. And that's what our push is right now. We still see sick houses yes, and we yes. still teach strategies. Yes. But um, right now we are, our focus is on you know, home vaccinations, which is very popular. There are a lot of people that are very interested in having yeah, and they, come. They, they absolutely do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Carol, I'm gonna ask at some point if we can have a part two to this, because I think this isn't just a one show episode. I think we need to continue, and maybe some of the other team members could join you as well. I think we that need to continue to, to educate and inform people. But I just wanna thank you for what you have done, what you continue to do, and actually what you will be doing in the future as well as the mayor but more importantly as a brock tony i just want to say thank you i really mean that thank you've been you. awesome thank you i really appreciate that and i'd like to thank you oh and thank you john Messia, especially his head's going to get too big <laughs> we got to stop talking about well, him you know what i really have to say this um i do not believe there are many cities and towns that provided this level of support mm. during the pandemic we were very very proud of the work we've done and as you know brockton has um maintained one of the lowest COVID positivity rates in the state. That's right. And we believe that's directly related to this program. And this has real world implications. It does. You know, uh, positivity rates connect directly to sick people. That's right. And the lower positivity rates, the less sick people. Yeah, and that's and the that's goal. our goal. And that's the goal. And we're going to continue that goal. Mm -hmm. And again, I just want to thank you for taking the time. Um, so my guest has been Carol Maloney, um, registered nurse, who really is the leader of the Wellness Trust team. And again, thank you. Um, again, I appreciate all of you always tuning in. 42 episodes of Our Brockton, it's hard to believe, but we will be coming back in the near future for the 43rd episode, a guest to be determined at that time. But we will see Carol and her team at a later date again, just to give some status updates and some more information. But again, if you have any need for the wellness nurses to come to your home or you have any needs for anything, always reach out to the mayor's office. You can do it again, 508-580-7123, or you could always email, email us as well, Mayor Sullivan at cobma.us. Again, we'll be back again, and it's an honor and privilege to serve as your mayor of the City of Champions. Be well and stay safe. Thank you.